Eternal Father, we lift our hands. We've come again, Lord. We ask that, Lord, you will bless us today. You will do for us, with us, within us, that which no man can do. We pray in the name of Jesus that that which is written concerning us before we were born, that which we were predestined to become, that in this convention there will be an actualization, manifestation of your plan and your purposes over our lives. Now we ask the Lord anything that has wearied us and exerted upon us. We ask today that let your power that is able to break yokes, your power that is able to set the captives free, your power that is able to heal be made manifest in this meeting. In the name of Jesus, I pray that angels will ascend and descend. We declare the Lord, your word will bring understanding, revelation, and freedom into our spirit and our souls. Touch my tongue with the call of fire. Oil my tongue that I will not speak the wisdom and the understanding of man, but I will communicate that which is on your mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, we take control and authority over ruling powers, territorial spirit and master forces. We pronounce freedom in the spirit, in the atmosphere that today signs, wonders and miracles will be registered in this gathering. In Jesus' mighty name. If you believe that, clap your hands and shout a big amen. And please take your seats in God's presence. Matthew 22, the verse number 25. Now there were with us seven brothers. Okay. Let me start from the verse number 23. The same day the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to him and asked him, saying, teacher, Moses said, if a man dies, Having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now, there were with us seven brothers. The first died after he had married and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. Likewise, the second also and the third, even to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, not the power of God. Now, jump to Deuteronomy 25, the verse number 5 and 6. Deuteronomy 25, the verse number 5. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. A husband's brother shall go into her, take her as, a, as his wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. And it shall be that the firstborn son which she bears will succeed to the name of his dead brother that his name will not be blotted out of Israel. Hallelujah. So in our prophetic convention this year we are talking about dealing with errors. Somebody say dealing with errors. In one of those moments of Jesus' ministry, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were his major opponents who confronted him 
all the time on his doctrines, his philosophies, his ideologies, and of course his preaching. And one time Jesus was preaching and whilst he was going about his duty, they came to him and they asked him a question. And the question they put to him was about something that really happened to a family that dwelt among them. And the basis for the question they put to Jesus was found in Deuteronomy 25 when Moses gave a law which was later referred to as the Leverage Law. And the Leverage Law states that if a man has a wife and dies and doesn't have a son, his brother-in-law will go into that man or the woman will look for a brother-in-law of the diseased husband so he can have a son. Why? That there will be a continuity. His name will not be bloated out. And so this is where we have this law called the liberal law from the word brother-in-law. And so they pick this law and they put it straight to Jesus. That we have a circumstance and we have a situation at hand. What is the situation? The situation is that we had seven brothers. And for all of them, they couldn't have a child with one woman. One after the other, they died. And finally, what happened was the woman also died. What do we do? The law was very important to them because passing on a baton to a next generation was something that was very key in the Jewish culture. Of course, it's not only in the Jewish culture, it was something that was practiced by the people of old. Even now, it is something we hold in high esteem in our society. And so having a man without a son or uh, without anything passing on to another generation was a huge issue. And so usually when people get married, Everybody is in a hurry to have a first child who should be a son, who will be an heir to his inheritance. It was one of the reasons why when God kept coming to Abraham, one day he came to him and said, I am the El Shaddai. The word El Shaddai from the Hebrew is the breasted one. He said, follow me and I will make you. After several years when Abraham was not seeing anything, he came back and said, you have not fulfilled your promise to me. There is nobody who is going to inherit me when I leave. As a matter of fact, it has to do with the continuity principle. God that we follow and we serve is a God of continuity. When God is doing something, God does not intend to end the stuff. He intends to continue with what he's doing till the last or the end of age. God doesn't begin things he does not intend to accomplish. God doesn't start something he doesn't intend to end with. And this is the reason why Paul said, I know whom I've committed my works into. He's able to keep it even to the very end. The Bible said in the book of Genesis, when God created the earth, and after all the creation, he made man in his own image. After that, he rested. The reason why God rested, not because he was tired, but God rested because he now has a man who can do what he, God, can do. <laughs> God created a being who can perform what he can perform. God created a being who can do what he can do so that man will continue with the legacy that he had left. God is a God of continuity. So he called the man out, Abraham. He called him out of his father's house. He said, get out of your father's house, of your tongue and of your kingdom. I'm going to show you a land that is flowing with Mecca and on. He said, land you don't know, but I'm going to show you. And if you follow the story of Abraham and the relationship that Abraham and God built together, it got to a point, God referred to Abraham as his friend. And one time God said, will I do anything without telling Abraham, knowing that he will command his generation, his children, to follow after me. That is continuity. 
And so one of the reasons why God could not keep a secret from Abraham was the fact that Abraham what, had what it takes to inscribe not just in the mind but in the heart of his children to follow and to continue in the path and the roots which he took by following this God. And this is the reason why God couldn't hide his secret from Abraham because Abraham was able to capture a certain principle that God holds in high esteem. It's the principle of continuity. And so after Abraham, we had a man that came after him, a mighty man, a mighty prophet called Moses, who also walked with God. When God began to give laws to Moses, the Bible said in the book of Deuteronomy, he began to talk to him and he said, write the laws down. He said, teach it to your children's children that they will never forget. He said, write it on their doorposts that when they step out the sea, when they come in the sea, it was still about the principle of continuity. God is the God of continuity. As God was walking with Moses and doing mighty stuff with him, opening the Red Sea, or you can call it the Yamsuf in the Hebraic, when the children of Israel went through that water and it parted into two, Moses lifting his rod, shutting down the entire system in Egypt, and he was doing all the mighty works. He didn't know that God had the plan to continue what he was doing. So after God killed Moses, everybody went into hiding and God appeared to Joshua. He said, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now arise, be strong, I am with you. God was already preparing Joshua for that assignment. It was still on the principle of continuity. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to draw your attention to the fact that God does not intend to do something that he has no intention of continuing that. And this is the reason why all of us who are finding ourselves in privileged positions of leadership, we must learn this principle of God and prepare people who are behind us and who must take over from us. Unfortunately, in the African setting, we don't do that. People die. Why do we appear in court to fight over our father's land? Why do we appear in court to fight over our father's houses? Because uh, we don't understand the principle of continuity, so we don't even prepare. As we are sitting here, there are people who are in their 50s and their 60s. They don't have a will. When they write a will, immediately you mention a will, people are afraid I'm about to die. So they will never write. They will wait until they can't speak, they can't write anything. The principle of continuity. God is a God of continuity. After he left Moses, Time will not permit me to run, to run you through all the scriptures. But let me just jump into the New Testament. When God converted himself into man, Christ Jesus, and came on the earth, he selected 12 people that he would need to support his work. After three and a half years, he poured himself into those people and then released a mandate and placed a command over their lives so that they can continue to do what he came to start. The principle of continuity. Those disciples also multiply themselves in other people. And over 2,000 years today, look at how strong we have become as Christians. With great numbers all over the nations of the world. And we've had many people who have come up with all kinds of research that Christianity is going into extinction and all that. But the more they propound those theories and researches, the more people are running to the cross of Christ. God is a God of continuity. If you are clapping, clap well. Kani Maha Santas. Why do we need the principle of continuity? Because number one, the principle of continuity establishes dominance. 
Anywhere you see somebody having dominion, whether in politics, economic, or in academia, or in any aspect or sphere of our life, that individual might have been there for a very long time or might have inherited something from a generation that went ahead of him. Continuity is the only thing that grants us the ability to establish dominion. One of the mandates God gave man was that he said, have dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the surface of the earth. Until we come to the point where we are able to continue what our fathers left or where they started from, we can never establish dominion. If you like, study our political horizon and look at the many people who are in politics, MPs, ministers, or whatsoever. When you trace their roots, a great number of them, their forefathers, ancestors, were part of the struggle for independence. And some way, somehow, they have served in a certain aspect of Ghana's economy. And they have passed the same baton. A greater number of our politicians have dominated where they are today because either their fathers or their uncles were once politicians. So they carve a niche and they maintain dominance in that particular area and they took over and nobody else have access. Once you are born into that family, it will not be very difficult for you to contest an election and win on the ticket of whatsoever party you are riding on. Because some people have gone ahead of them and they have laid that principle of continuity. If we don't continue, we can never have dominance. Number two reason why God established the principle of continuity. Ladies and gentlemen, continuity is also another thing that brings us to the place of multiplicity. It is almost impossible to be multiplied in something that we have not continued in. The scripture talks about the fact that they said they continued in the apostles' doctrine. If we continued in the preaching, we continue in steadfastness, we continue in prayer, we continue in our pursuit of God, in the pursuit of God and his plan and his purposes for our life. This is the principle that brings us to the place of abundance. Research has shown that 80 to 90 percent of the world's billionaires are second generation billionaires. They are not first generation billionaires. Somehow, it, has, it is an established fact by data that 80 to 90 percent of the world billionaires, they inherited their wealth from an ancestry that had gone ahead of them. There are people sitting around you right now that you envy. You don't need to envy them. Because what they had was a transfer from somewhere into their hands. Continuity. The principle of continuity. However, in the life of these seven brothers, there were three key things I discovered as we deal with our theme for this convention. Seven of them, the first brother, married a woman and for some strange reason he couldn't have a child with a woman the second brother came married the same woman he died third brother he died fourth brother he died up to the seventh one he also died none of them could produce a child with this particular woman there was something about this woman that all the seven brothers were not able to conquer there was something about this woman that all the seven brothers were not able to resist. Anyone that comes into the atmosphere and the domain of this woman, somehow there is a force and an entity that breaks the neck of that individual and pushes him to an early grave. Number one thing that happened was that the error that was found in this family was the fact that they had crashed the continuity principle in their life. They couldn't continue anything. Anybody that starts something lacks what it takes to continue. There are people sitting in this church today. Your father tried building a house. He couldn't. Your mother tried doing something. He couldn't. 
And if you go back and check your story and your history, it's the same with every other person with that same name, with that bloodline from that home. But today, in this convention and in this conference, in the name of Jesus, by the power of God, that error shall be corrected. Clap your hands and shall it shall be corrected. That is an error. That is an error. Do you know that when Saul committed that sin, the prophet said to him, he said, the Lord would have established your throne forever. But because of what you did, the Lord will have established it forever. And this is the reason why God has to make a promise to David that I will not cut you off. I will let another seed that will come out of your loins take your throne and sit on the same throne so that the principle of continuity will be established in your life. When I look at these seven brothers, there was something about this family. So the Sadducees came to Jesus and they were asking him a question. Forget about the marriage they are talking about. Whose uh, wife that woman is going to be in heaven. Let's look at what happened to the seven brothers when they were alive. Because as we speak now, we are not in heaven. We are living on earth. God wants us to occupy on the earth before Jesus comes. So what is the reason? What was the cause behind their failure in life? Seven people, none of them could stand. All of them, why? Because the devil had already destroyed the continuity ability. There are people sitting here. You are born into a default family of failure. All you have to do is to bear a name and once you bear a name you will fail once you bear that name you will go down that is an error but when you become a man of God a Christ born again believer tongue speaking God puts oil upon your head to correct the errors that were enforced before you were born Adamahaya, there were some things that existed before we came. When Moses was born, he was born into an Iranian system. It was an error. What was the system? It was a system of slavery that lasted for 430 years. He might have been a prophet. He might have been an engineer. He might have been a professor. He might have learned all the literatures and the systems of Egypt. But once he was born a Jew, he was born by default a slave. There are people sitting here today day you were born default a poor man default a sick individual but default you were born a person who carried a certain gene can i preach you now can i preach can i preach help me holy ghost help me holy ghost and i'm a heart shatter. all of us here we have something within us called your dna your dna is going to give us a genetic information about you in your dna we have 46 chromosomes 30 23 from your father and 23 from your mother that makes up your genetic makeup so if we want to know something about you we can easily trace your father and trace your mother because of the genes you carry so biologically you are a combination of your father and your mother so if you are sick and you go to Dr. Lappy he's going to ask you a history is there anybody in your family who ever had a breast cancer whoever had asthma whoever was diabetic once you respond yes they put that sickness on you it is in the bloodline it is coming from your source so there are things that comes to you by default there are sicknesses that comes to you by default that is an error i read my bible the bible said behold if any man be in christ he is a new creature a creature that has not been seen before and so when you are born again god anoints you to correct errors and today i stand on this platform every biological error in the name of the lord jesus by the power of the holy ghost let the blood of the lamb flush it out of 
of your system, out of your kidney, out of your womb, out of your liver, out of your eyes, out of your body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Whatever sickness you inherited from your father and from your mother, I declare today, whatever disease that attacks men and women of your lineage and of your bloodline, today I stand on this altar and I prophesy let the force from the altar let the power from the altar revoke the disease revoke the sickness and we test glaucoma we test cancer we test diabetes we test premature death in the name of the Lord Jesus let the voice from this altar alter your biological system let the voice from this altar alter your genetic makeup in the name of Jesus if I hear your shout right now let the power of the Holy Ghost I enter your house as I'm speaking right now let angels work on you let angels work on you everybody online everybody seated here whatever reports the doctor gave you that is an error I came to speak now in the name of Jesus your lab results are changing the lab results of your husband and of your mother and of your father and of your children in the name of Jesus they are changing right now anything that kills people you will not die I shall not die but I will live and declare the counsels of the law there is an assignment on my life there is a purpose on my head there is a prophecy on my life I must fulfill the prophecy I must finish my race I must run my race and I will not die before that time we speak into the heavens and we speak into the earth we speak into the powers and into the elements that be today in the name of Jesus I need Messiah I feel the power and the energy of the spirit as I'm speaking to you right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost the hand of the Lord is working on your soul the hand of the Lord is working on your body the hand of the Lord is working on your spirit a new you a new man a new being in the name of Jesus arrows are being corrected arrows are being removed if I hear your shout power locate Kadula Masata Paul said because of the abundance of the revelation granted unto me a messenger of Satan has been sent to buffet me the word buffet in the Greek means continuous slapping continuous slapping continuous slapping another meaning also means continuous blow continuous blow that is an error how can you be slapping me continuously there are people sitting here today the devil is slapping you continuously poverty is slapping you continuously failure is slapping you continuously but in this convention we stand on the authority of the name of Jesus by the power of God and it is slapping your life your destiny your investment your business your ministry the works of your hands I came to speak to you with an authority in the word of the law today by the power of God prevail I said 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 prevail you will not be defeated 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 you mess with my father but you cannot mess with me you mess with my mother but you cannot mess with me I am a new breed I am a new generation I am a new seed I don't fail I don't go down higher we go higher we move I prophesy in this convention the grace for another level the grace for another phase the grace for another season is resting on your hands it's resting on your head it's resting on your career if I I hear your sound now. Power! Locate your life.
devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. These seven men, they have become a failure. Anytime somebody wants to quote a bad example, they will refer to them. The seven brothers. The seven brothers. The seven brothers. Anytime they want to use a bad example, an example of a failure, they will refer to those people. One day, I read the scriptures, Jeremiah 22, I think the verse number 20, the Bible said to the prophet, he said, write this man's name down he will be childless and he said none of his descendants will rise to the throne of David I checked scriptures many years after that man King Jehoiakim his descendants struggle and the Bible said God spoke to the prophet to speak to the earth listen there are spiritual things you must understand the man was not cursed but they gave a record to the earth against him so he may walk in Ghana the earth is against him he will go to America the earth is against him he will go to Europe the earth is against him that is why we have our brothers today some of our brothers left Ghana they are in China but they are struggling they are in Europe but they are struggling they are in America but they are struggling it is not about being in America or being in Europe places don't make people it is people that make places I'm not speaking to somebody here there is something that has been spoken to the earth against their life but today I stand in the power of the blood any record the earth is holding against your health against your business against your destiny against your marriage against your investment against your life I came as a prophet of the law and in the name of the Lord Jesus I speak over you and your children and your spouses and your businesses and your career and your dreams and your investment today by the power of the Holy Ghost let the blood of the law he has blotted out every hand writing of ordinance that was against us I declare today every wrong record the earth has against you let the record be changed I said let the record be changed I said let the record be changed I said let the record be changed clap your hands right now and shall let the record be it is an error for someone like you to be carrying an error it is an error for someone like you to be carrying an error the one error of these seven brothers number two error on their life was that an ability to finish what they start has been revoked from their life they are not able to finish something whenever they start they don't finish there are people like that they start a relationship they can't finish they start a business it doesn't end well they do this ministry they do that ministry today they are an apostle the next day they are an evangelist or they are motivational speaker they are everything they are not able to finish what they start the ability to arrive has been taken from their hands that is error number two that has been found in the life of these seven brothers today what your father couldn't finish listen there is an anointing that is coming upon you you will finish it you will accomplish it in the name of the Lord Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost what your families don't finish you will finish what your leader doesn't finish you will finish your house you will finish it your company you will finish it that mother you will finish it in the name of Jesus you will finish your school you will build schools you will build hospitals you will build cathedrals you will build Mahaya, warehouses in the name of Jesus by the power of God the anointing of a builder is on your hands today I prophesy over every individual here God does not want you to go empty those of you coming to the altar let the fire of God and the power of the Holy Ghost locate you right now in the name of Jesus
I am a finisher. I am a finisher. Paul said, I've run my race. I've kept the faith. I am a finisher. Lay your hands on your chest and declare, I am a finisher. I will not be cut in the prime of life. I will finish my race. I will finish my purpose. In the name of Jesus, everything I start today, I will finish it. You will finish it. You will accomplish it. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will finish that school. You will finish that degree. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will finish. Action Chapel, Christ Cathedral, you will finish. Sakota la Mahaya, Lake Take Boho Satas, Lake Tatana Mahaya. These seven brothers, they took that ability from them. Some of you standing here, you came to meet a house. It's the same thing with your uncle. It's the same thing with your aunties. It's the same thing. All of them marry and they come back to the house. All of them marry and they come back. They are not able to finish anything in their life. You go back to your village. You see a lot of uncompleted projects. It was started by your father and started by your uncle. Somewhere, somehow, they could not accomplish it. They left it. It's like the woman that died. The Bible said the church gathered together. They showed to Peter. He said, this woman she made us tunics. Her name was Dorcas. He said, no. Something has killed her. She has not finished her assignment. This woman is our breadwinner. She has taken care of us. Clothed our nakedness. But for her would have been hungry. But for her would have been dead. I came to speak to you. If you don't finish your assignment, there is a generation that is relying on you there is a community that is relying on you you must accomplish that company so that some people will get job you must accomplish that mission so that some people will be saved i declare today by the fire of god and the anointing of the holy ghost let the anointing of a finisher come upon your life let that arrow be taken away from your forehead let that mark be removed from your life let that mark be lifted from your destiny clap your hands right now and shout I am a finish Oh, 
you to do you will finish whatever God has placed on your life you will finish it in the name of Jesus hit your chest and shout I am a finisher hit your chest again and scream I am a finisher hit your chest for the third time and scream I am a finisher years ago as a student in Bishop Herman College we had a friend one time we we're going to write an English paper and this guy was behind the examination hall and he was learning he's always learning but his marks were never good never never good we're writing SSE which is now WASI he was behind the exam hall learning. We went in and wrote about two hours, 30 minutes and came out and he was still there learning. When we came out, he asked, where are we coming from? We, we told him we went and wrote the paper. He was shocked. How? He came so close to the exam hall and decided he was going to sit there and learn till the time was up. He kept learning till we finished writing the exam. Years passed on. One day I stopped a taxi at Hatcho. It was an old broken down taxi. And when the driver stopped and I opened the door, it was this my friend who was driving the taxi. I look at him. I couldn't ask any question. We we're looking at each other's face. He just asked me, how are you? I couldn't even ask him why are you driving this taxi. Broken down taxi. Those type of taxis that retired people drive. When you sit inside, you can see all the metals and the hydraulics. That's what he was driving. I lifted my head and I was just sitting down quietly. I remembered the amount of effort this young man put in his life at secondary school level. And yet, he ended like this. When you are dealing with an error, it's not about your physical strength. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. And so when you deal with an error, you will do everything you know to do. You will do all, deploy all the principles. But if you don't deal with the error, it will fight you. There are people sitting here today on life, on social media. You have done everything possible to keep a man, but you couldn't keep him. I was praying with a friend. She said to me, "Say, man of God my great grandfather never liked my grandmother my grandmother loved him my grandmother I stayed with her my grandfather never loved my grandmother but my grandfather my grandmother loved my grandfather but the man never loved him back he said the same thing my father never loved my mother but my mother had love for my father but it was not reciprocated he said, me too now. The guy I'm married from Eastern region, he doesn't love me. I will do everything possible, but he never loves me. It's an error. Today, anything beyond your strength, anything beyond your power, anything beyond your economic prowess, anything beyond your strength today, let God arise on his throne and bring divine intervention let God arise and bring divine intervention I pray today from this altar every one of you from your business to your marriage to your career to your ministry you have done everything possible you have done your best you have done what you know to do you have done all that you know to do and yet you can't find your way through but today I came as a force from the law to speak over your life God will arise on your behalf and correct errors in your life error in your child's health error in your spouse's life error in your career error in your business in the name of Jesus clap your hands now and shall let it be corrected I'm about to release you to pray but watch this the third error of the seven brothers was the fact that they have removed they have taken them out of their place of purpose their destiny whatever destiny they were carrying 
all the seven of them, they couldn't live to fulfill that. None of them. None of them. The one who wrote about these seven brothers and narrated the story couldn't tell us about what they have in life. They couldn't tell us about the achievements. They never achieved anything. To those of you, rubbish achievement. <laughs> Even God in heaven recognizes great men. He recognizes them. There are people who don't play on stuff. There was a song that was composed, Obia and Obia. The guy who composed that song was living in my area at Newtown. When you live there, you can sing that song. When you come to Burma camp, you can't say Obia and Obia. And when that song was composed, do you know the people who danced to it? Average people and poor people, they danced to that song. Because it fits into their definition. They have accepted who they are. But today in the name of Jesus, I refuse to accept any condition that has been imposed and enforced on my life. Clap your hands right now and declare, I reject it, I reject it, I reject it, I reject it, I reject it. place of destiny. They could never fulfill anything in life. These were men who never achieved anything. God told David, when David misbehaved, he said, I took it from following the sheep and I made you ruler over my people. God recognizes that there is a difference between following the sheep and ruling people. The two of them are not the same. Charles Spurgeon said, if, if I am a, a horn in the mouth of the Lord, it is good. But it is better if I am a trumpet. Because a trumpet, the sound of a trumpet can go far than the sound of a horn. The job we are doing is good. It's taking care of you. You can buy food. You can pay your fees. But there is another job that can leave you surplus. That can leave you more. And that is what God wants to give to you. Today, in this prophetic encounter conference, in the name of the Lord Jesus, where you are, may the Lord move you. May the Lord shift you. May the Lord move you. May the Lord shift you. May the Lord move you. Clap your hands now and scream, shift, shift, shift. we break new grounds we step in new territories in the name of jesus we lay hold on what is ours by the power of god we shall not be robbed we possess our possession on Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess his possession. Today I declare by the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anything that is yours, go for it. Anything God has given to you, go for it. You will not be robbed. You will not be denied. You will not be rejected. No more. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands right now and scream I receive it. Listen. In two minutes, I'm about to release you to pray. <laughs> All these things are things of the world. We don't need them. Naked you came and naked you go. Job made that statement when he was frustrated. And he was in trouble. After he was delivered, go and read the statements he made. They were different from what he said. It is never the intention of God for any individual to live with empty hands and have nothing. That is why in the book of Exodus, ladies and gentlemen, when Israel was moving out of Egypt, God said to them, I will not allow you to go empty handed. It's an error to live with empty hands. There are people standing here, when you look at your life, there is nothing on you right now. You have nothing, nothing, nothing. God forbid, but when you die, your children will have nothing to have. 
but in the name of Jesus. Before 2024 comes to an end, the Lord will put a substance in your hands and the substance on your life. Your business will change, your profit will change, your career will change, your ministry will change, your resource will change, and I'm a higher, your inflow will change. If you believe that, clap your hands and shout, do it, Lord. In the new horses, and I'm a higher. You know how the Bible puts it, Bishop? The Bible said, a good father leaves inheritance for his children's children. So God does not want us to move empty-handed. When Melchizedek took tithe from Abraham's mommy, he prayed a prayer. He said, blessed be the God of Abraham, the possessor of all things. The God you serve is a possessor. He possesses things. The God you serve is an owner. He possesses things. How can you be with nothing? That is an error. Today I declare a prophecy over your life by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are a school owner. You are a hospital owner. You are a tractor owner. You are a transport business owner. You are an owner in the name of the Lord Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire of an owner, the favor of an owner rest on your hands. Rest on your life. Rest on your destiny. Rest on your business. You are an owner. Everybody here under 40 years, I will give you a direction. And tomorrow, I will touch your head with oil. There are things you must achieve before you get to 40 years. I made a statement in our church and I said, the man who woke up and became popular was not asleep. When I finished my master's, I had a red book. Today, I put that red book out. I wrote my age down. I wrote my age. And I asked myself, what will I achieve? What have I achieved? So I gave myself a four-year span that I was going to do a PhD. After I submitted my first proposal, I went to my professor at Kwabena. He read the proposal that, that early morning and he threw it away on the floor. He told me, this doesn't qualify for anything. He's not interested. I needed his name on that document because he is an authority in radiation physics. And of course, medical physics. And so, if he's my supervisor and I go for the interview, I will not struggle with the professors because they know I have a good professor who is willing to work with me. He threw it away. I came back. I sat in my couch and I started crying. <laughs> Listen. Anytime you want to cross a line and you want to break a limit and to do something that has not been done before in your house, Satan will throw every weapon at you. The devil will never fold his hands and watch you succeed. And this is the reason why you must also be very confrontational in your work with God. If you think you are going to sit down, listen, what is yours is yours. If it is yours, it will come to you. Have you not read in the Bible when David took somebody's wife, killed the man, and married a woman? If she's my girl, she will come to me. Be there. If it's my husband, he will go and come back to me. Who taught you that philosophy? Who told you that thing? Who told you such a thing? He said, these people are robbed. And they are kept in prison holes. I declare today in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will fight for what is yours. You will contend for what is yours. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And you will have it. From the days of John the Baptist up to now. The kingdom of God suffered a violence. And the violence taken it by force. I pronounce over you today in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost go for your business go for your marriage go for your money go for your scholarship go for your children go for your womb go for your blessings go for your breakthrough in the name of Jesus clap your hands right now and declare I was going to do it. I sat down that day. After I finished crying, the thought came to my mind. The Lord spoke to me. I went to another professor at Kolebu. We had a discussion there. He said to me, we are bringing a new high dose rate treatment for brachytherapy. So you can work around this. So we started working. Two, three years into our work, met foundation. 
the oldest pharmaceutical company in the world was doing a summit and they were looking for PhD students who have done work in vaccine production and cancer in women. I submitted my entry. 1,000 plus of us, that's what we were told later on. They reduced the number to 300. 800, 300, 500, my name was there. To 100, my name was there. To 80, my name was there. The day I stood on that platform and I was giving a presentation, we had, we had scholars from 30 countries all over the world gathered there and cameras were fixed. The, the then president of Mauritius, Professor, she's a woman, she's a chemist, was our host. When I stood on that platform that day and I started giving my presentation, then I remembered this same work was thrown away by another person in Ghana. But this is the same work that was recognized by an international body. You see, your work is what shows the grace you are carrying. If you have grace and you are doing nothing, you frustrate the grace. I was preaching. I will preach like this. And when I get home, 11, 12, I will sit down in my library and I will learn from 11 to 4 a.m. My wife is my witness. For five good years, I was pastoring the church and I was still doing a PAD. 3 a.m., I will run back to UCC. Sometimes my professor, Professor Maku, will call me. He said, Avevo. He will just ask, that's how he called me. He said, Avevo, I want to see you tomorrow. He knows I'm in Accra. He just said, I want to see my office. And I will go, wake up at dawn, 3 a.m., get to his office. He will open a chapter of his Avevo. I don't understand this. I said, Prof, this, this equation means A, B, C. He said, oh, okay, sorry. You can go. He did that thing more than four times. I have every reason to give up. I have every reason to give up. But I said to myself, I will never. I will never. I will never. When I finished that presentation and we did the publication, I came back to school. I met my prof. I said, prof, this is what I had. And I'm, I'm doing the publication. I put your name on it. He said, you do? I said, yes. He said, can you give me a copy so that I can submit it to the university? The reason why you went for a loan they don't want to give to you and you are doing everything possible for your business to work but something is fighting it is because the devil doesn't want you to correct the error the error of failure the error of stagnation the error of premature death he doesn't want you to correct the error but today by the fire of the holy ghost and the power of the spirit of the living god you will correct an error yes. remember what i told you yesterday you are an error corrector yes. i'm an error corrector we are error corrector yes. the anointing the purpose of the anointing is to break yokes is to correct error today i pray over every student here over every mother here over every father here by the anointing of god over every businessman here in the name of jesus error shall be Lift your hands. Lift your hands to Jesus. Go na 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 boho shatas. Gati gata gaba hai. Le gada la bahai. Ha na bahai. I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life has changed I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life has changed I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life has changed I will never be the same
to stretch your hands towards the altar now. In three minutes we are praying that my father, whatever error I came to meet, whatever error I was born into, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. by the power of the blood, let the tag of the error be removed and let the error be corrected. If you are live on Facebook, I want you to plug into the prayer right now. In the name of Jesus, the error of premature death, the error of sickness and disease, failure, Today, as we lift up our voice in three minutes, everybody pray now. Clap your hands, lift up your voice, let the error be corrected. Everybody online, I want you to plug into the prayer right now. Rakose, Sakataya, Sakataya, Akototo Saka, Akataya, Lakata Napato, Rekototo Saka, Matuna Nana, Rapapaya, Akatata, Rapana Nana, Sakata, Rakata, 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 Sultataya, Akuna Makataya, Akuna Makatalaba, somebody clap your hands. Lift up your voice. Clap your hands right now. Lift up your voice. Atosaya. Rapala katosa. Ikatala nako. Asakataya. Akata. Ratata. Rakoto. Sotaya. Akana matoya. Asokata matuna. Akona matondo saya. Akimako. Sakataya. Rekototo. Sakata. Sanakoto. Rekoteta. Sota. Akoto. Akata. Rakoto sa. Akata. Atoto. Atoto se. Ifatata. Akatata. Akatata. Atoto. Akata. Atoto. Sonaya. 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 Lift your voice. Clap your hands and pray. 
Let me hear your voice. Somebody pray. One more minute. One more minute. Lift up your voice. Ragadaya, 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 
were failures. They failed. They couldn't have anything in life. They died empty. They died with nothing traceable to their name. They died. Let the anointing of an achiever the anointing that causes men to achieve things, great things for God, for community, for their nation, and for themselves. Let that anointing fall on us. Everybody stretch your hands. Stretch your hands towards the altar. Look, I told you that God recognizes achievement. God was talking to Jeremiah and he said, even if Moses and Samuel comes to pray, I will not hear their prayer. God recognized the achievement of the prayer life of Moses and Samuel. That they were dead and they were with him but he was still proud of what he had done. It is an error to leave the earth with nothing. Everybody stretch your hands. The anointing of high achievers. We will not stay here and pray in tongues and go out there and fail. No, we will not. We will not come here praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues and feel good. And when we go out there, unbelievers are controlling us. Today, let that error be corrected. Yes. I said, let that error be corrected. Yes. Let that error be corrected. Yes. Let that error be corrected. Yes. We redirect the course of history. We redirect the course of history. You are lifting your voice and you are saying, Oh Lord, let the anointing of an achiever rest on my head, rest on me. Clap your hands and pray. Lift your voice. Only two minutes, everybody lift your voice. Let the anointing of an achiever, a high achiever, rest on us, 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 rest on us. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you sure you are praying? Are you sure you are praying? Somebody clap your hands, lift up your voice, let the anointing look at you. Let the anointing of an Achino rest on your head, rest on your life. Sapa <laughs> 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 
Atata, Atata, Atua, Apoli, Atata, Asuka, Tose, Lift up your voice. Let the anointing of an Ashiva, let the anointing of an Ashiva, Ataya, 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 Arakadaya, Ha 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 